Hey ladies, welcome to the macros training. Um, I wanna go ahead and preface all of this by saying that what we're about to go down and what I'm going to explain can get really complicated. It's exciting, it's fun, it's awesome to learn about food and how it breaks down, how to track it, how to become aware, but I just wanna go ahead and kind of level out the, the field here and explain that if you love nerding out on food and nutrition stuff, you're gonna love this training. If this at the end makes you feel overwhelmed, um, do not panic because that's the purpose of this group that we're launching April 1st, the six weeks to food freedom. We're gonna be using the portion fix control um, or ultimate portion fix. That's the, the program that we're going through, but it's got portion containers. So basically all of the stuff I'm about to explain may just give you more of a sense of appreciation for these portion control containers because all the math is already done for you. You don't have to sit here and calculate everything in your phone. I've got friends who love doing that and it works really well for them. It does not work well for me. So from time to time, I will go back maybe for a week and track all of my macros, really um, be very specific about it because I need to bring back my awareness to what I'm eating and to how much I'm eating because sometimes we just kind of get in the flow of life and we stop being aware of what's going into our bodies. So this is a great tool to do that. Um, eventually you're gonna get so good at this that you're gonna start recognizing the portions when you go out to eat, when you're at home, and you won't have to use the portion fix containers as much or at all. It just depends on how much you love them, if it makes you feel like it brings freedom to you and safety and boundaries. Sometimes it's just easier to live life with boundaries because we almost are freer within those boundaries because we know where the line is. We know um, where we need to stay in order to be healthy and feel our best. So you can just kind of gauge for yourself, but I definitely want you to allow this new thing to kind of take root, make it become a habit for at least give it a couple weeks before deciding that it's for you or it's not for you because it's something brand new. Um, you're gonna be becoming aware of things you weren't aware of before. Don't allow that to bring guilt on you. It's just a method for understanding and being honest about what we're eating. Uh, and sometimes that can be hard and it comes with a whole lot of other emotional things. That's something we're also gonna talk about in this six weeks to food freedom group. So what I'm about to go through is like the breakdown of all the science behind it and all the things you would need to do um, on your end to track and calculate your macros, why and how to do that. Again, we will only be using the portion fix containers in the six weeks to food freedom group. So it will be much easier than this, and you're not gonna have to be doing a lot of calculations and stuff, but I wanted to explain what goes into the process and how it all works so that you can at least begin to maybe practice that a little bit and just start to become aware of what is going to be some pieces of the puzzle for you in your food eating. So I'm just gonna kind of go through this presentation I've, I've designed for you already and explain everything and just kind of read through the slides. Um, but it's everything I've learned over the past like four years of tracking macros, eating for performance, for health, for optimal energy, and whatnot. So let me go ahead and share my screen. <clears throat> okay. Awesome. Okay. So macros. <laughs> what the heck are these? All right, what are macros? Macronutrients are carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. These three macronutrients, for the most part, make up our food, um, and food also contains micronutrients, to be clear, which are vitamins, minerals, other compounds such as phytonutrients, and different macronutrients can actually significantly affect our energy levels. So depending on whether you're eating more or less carbohydrates, protein, and fats than is a good number for you, it can really change the game for you, for good or for bad. Um, it affects our ability to do work, recover from exercise, chronic disease risk, body composition, and so much more. When it comes down to numbers, weight loss or gain is really achieved by consuming less or more calories than your body can burn off over an extended period of time. Uh, we've talked about this a little bit, and it's really hard to be super specific about your calorie count. That's why we're not counting calories, because yes, macros are calculated off of an, a, a caloric number for you. So if those macros don't work, then what we do is we begin to shift those a little bit um, 
and part of that will play into you know the calories that you get every day but instead of just focusing on that one empty number you can fill calories with anything you can fill it with donuts you could fill it with broccoli like it, you, it's free for all and it kind of is with macros too but at least we know that we're getting the right amount of protein and the right amount of fat and the right amount of carbohydrates that are going to really fuel us well um, notwithstanding what we fill those up with. But when we use the portion fix containers, I've got some great easy food lists. Um, there is a cookbook available and we're gonna be sharing recipes and everything so that you will know exactly how much of that is what you need. It'll be super simplified. When you track macros, you're also tracking calories, like I said. Um, however, macros are the three ways in which calories break down in terms of real foods, basically. So protein, um, eating a high protein diet supports the maintenance and building of lean muscle mass, and protein is an incredibly satiating macro and will do the best of all three to keep you fuller longer. Carbohydrates, uh, carbs are the macro most readily used by your body for energy. So many times I see people cutting out carbohydrates from their diet and thinking that um, they're just that they're not good for you or you know there's so much back and forth between keto diet and paleo diet my honest take is that if any diet suggested to you like seriously cuts out a major food group that you can find naturally like <laughs> we're not talking about chips here we're talking about like foods that can be derived at whole sources like grains legumes um, certain fats or certain proteins, then I don't think that is a healthy, balanced way of living life because all these different foods offer so many things to us. Um, yes, you know, for example, you could take an apple and say, oh, well, there's sugar in the apple, but yes, but it, it doesn't act just like regular table sugar would in your body because it comes with fiber and it comes with other vitamins and nutrients in it. So all these whole food sources while we're gonna look at them through the lens of what macro are they for a little bit, remember that there's so much more to food than just their macro um, or what makes them up. So carbohydrates help replenish glycogen stores that are depleted during strenuous activity or working out. Consuming more carbohydrates to support activity levels can help you achieve better performance and also a recovery post-workout. Yes, please. I've lived with chronic soreness for years when overtraining and not eating right, and that sucks. Um, the only thing worse than being like immediately sore from a workout is just being like chronically sore days and days later. Um, it sucks. But um, we are gonna be doing the 21 Day Fix and 21 Day Fix Extreme workout programs on the journey while we're working through the nutrition program. They really go hand in hand and I'm super excited about it. I've not gone through these fully before. Um, so we're definitely gonna wanna be recovering from those in order to press in and do our best work. Fats, there's a lot of vitamins in the body that require fat to be absorbed by the body, such as vitamins A, E, D, and K. Omega fatty acids like EPA, DHA, help support joint health, cardio cardiovascular health, digestion, and whatnot. And fats also support healthy hair, skin, and nails. Again, yes, please. <laughs> so when we are building our plate, first thing is we're gonna talk about carbohydrates. You have got these lists. I've emailed them to you in your specific nutrition plan with your carbohydrate, um, I mean, your macro breakdown. And so these are some of the things that we are going to use to fill those portion control containers. Um, and so you know that like anything from this vegetable line is gonna go in the green container, for example. You stuff that puppy full and you know you have so many that you eat in a day so you can easily use that to throw on a plate, um, prep meals, whatever you wanna do with it. But these lists are just a great place to start. So when you're grocery shopping, when you're trying to you know, create a meal for yourself, just pick any of these, put them in the right container, and voila, done. Um, but also right now, while we're calculating our macros out with our phone, um, or just, you know, this is a great reference point. So here's some great carbohydrates for you to choose from. That includes vegetables, fruits, grains, beans, and legumes. Um, all these are so awesome and offer so many different things for your body. Let's see. Next is fats. So we've got another list of great fats here. Um, as you can kind of see as we go down, you've got, uh, there's a lot of things that will be in multiple um, categories. So yes, lean ground chicken or turkey. Um, wait, I think this may be the, hold on. 
oh yeah, I think I double did it. Scratch this. <laughs> um, let's see. Hold on one hot second. I was like, wait, that's my protein list. I got excited and I threw it on the same page. Okay, sweet. So let's do this. Let's go back. Play. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen again with you. I'm doing really good with this. <laughs> let's see. Okay, presentation. Awesome. So here's our fats. You've got seeds, you've got oils and nut butters, um, and we've got a handful of other fats that I will share with you later that are just great to choose from. Um, again, some will have protein in them because there's a lot of fats that have protein. There's a lot of protein that also has some fat in it. So um, the portion control containers, that whole system is excellent because that takes this into calculation and you just whatever you end up filling that certain color container with, you, you don't have to worry about anything beyond that. It's awesome. Um, and of course, building our plate protein. So again, some of these are going to be good fats as well. Um, <clears throat> we've got all the different meat options, eggs, Greek yogurts, uh, clams. Yeah, <laughs> but red meat, I can do that. Um, there's just a whole awesome list for you to choose from. And surely you'll find a handful of things in here you know that you love and you'll just make these a staple. I tend to always try to have a lean protein cooked and ready because I like, I feel like I can just grab sides or grab vegetables and throw it on it. But often I find that the thing that's hardest to prepare last minute is those proteins. And so what I'll do is I'll either like boil some chicken or in a crock pot and like have it ready. Um, just do a bunch at one time and have a couple days worth of chicken or whatever to add stuff to it. That's what's helped me. Um, and I always start my day with protein. So Sometimes when I wake up first thing, I'm not really hungry for a full proper breakfast with fats and proteins and all that stuff. So what I do is I'm like a hobbit. I have first breakfast and second breakfast. And when I first get up, I have like a little bowl usually of some type of high fiber cereal. And I love to throw hemp seeds on there or whatever else you want. Um, a little bit of my almond milk, sometimes regular milk because I don't have a problem digesting dairy. And so I will eat that for first breakfast. And then a couple hours later, like mid morning, I'm, I'm actually ready for a proper plate. And so I will make sure I build in protein to that because if I don't start with protein intentionally in the morning, I always promise you every time will end up at the end of my day, either crying over a bowl of like grilled chicken because I just have to get it in or trying to like make a protein shake or something last minute because I have not hit the right numbers. So it's just starting your day intentionally. Um, and we'll talk about that as we talk about like tracking macros, but that's my biggest thing is I know that I always under eat with protein. So that's always my focus, um, kind of along with water. Cause I just know where my weaknesses are and you'll kind of figure that out as we go through this too. So reading nutrition labels. Um, let me see. So as you can see right here, this nutrition label, for example, is all broken down. We've got the serving size and the weight, the total fat, total carbohydrate count, and protein. Um, counting your macros all starts with knowing what is in your food, which comes from being able to read and understand nutrition labels. You can find the nutrition label for most foods on the packaging, although they can look slightly different from product to product or from country to country. You can typically find the same basic information, which is this total fat, total carb and protein and dietary fiber is important too. Um, it's been shown that I think the average for women is like 25 grams, but it's shown that it, we, we do better with 30 to 35 grams of fiber a day. I find that if I'm even a little bit intentional with eating the right vegetables and stuff, I get it pretty easily. But if I just kind of float through my day and don't really pay attention to what I'm eating, then I tend to eat like half the amount of fiber and I can majorly tell. That's why I love my Shakeology drink because it's got extra fiber and digestive enzymes. So it really helps with regularity um, and just making me feel better. Uh, serving size. So you'll notice on here that the serving size is given as a cup measurement and as a weight. Uh, if you're, if obviously like all this stuff, let me, let me preface this again real quick. This stuff will not really be as applicable when we go into using the portion fix containers. And at the very end of this, you can probably be saying, thank goodness, because this is a lot. But right now, it'd be a great time to practice this by downloading the MyFitnessPal app, which we'll talk about in a second, and start practicing these things. So we strongly encourage you, I strongly encourage you to measure by weight. 
Um, the total fat, this includes all types of fat, saturated, unsaturated, and trans fat, and this is the number that you should track. So saturated fat is not bad, guys. There are a lot of whole good food sources, and our body needs saturated fat. And when it comes down to it, all that saturated fat means is that there's literally so many hydrogen ions on that like thing of fat that no more can like bond to it. Um, a lot of times we think, oh, saturated fat is bad. It is hydrogenated fats that you want to steer away from. But if you ever thought saturated bad, no, it's totally fine when it comes from whole food sources. Uh, total carbohydrate count, this includes sugars, sugar alcohols, um, and dietary fiber, and then protein. This is the number to track for protein. Pretty sweet and simple. Um, again, tracking apps. My Fitness Pal is my favorite. There's a handful you can just look on Google Play or the Apple i Store, um, and yeah, just use you use whatever you're comfortable with. My Fitness Pal is used by a lot of people, so I feel like the database is so huge that I can go to almost any restaurant, unless it's a small local place, and search any type of food, and it's in there. It's got a lot of barcodes, so you can easily scan a product with your phone, and boom, it pops in all the right information in there. Um, and then some tips about this are just to log smart. So like I said, you can scan a code, but always check against the label um, because it's not always accurate. So just double check your numbers there, what it pulls into the app. Um, select smart. There are a ton of different entries for food when a barcode is unavailable. So just simply use the search bar and just search as the most specific that you can get for the item that you're looking to track. Um, and then check your work. Always double check the numbers for accuracy. So recommended serving sizes. This is how we accurately track your food. You need to know what foods to put into your MyFitnessPal diary. Um, and so weighing your food is going to be a best practice. If you don't already own a scale, you can get a really cheap one, probably like Walmart, Target, online at Amazon. Um, I've got one and it's small enough where I can throw it in my bag if I wanted, but I've never been that dedicated. So I just do stuff at home or prep because um, I'm usually not cooking outside of the house. Um, so to be most accurate, create the most consistency and have the fastest progress. Everything that you eat has to be weighed so that you can approximate the numbers to track. So this is very scientific. And again, if you don't nerd out on this stuff, it can feel really um, like burdensome. Uh, that's been my experience. But once you do it for a couple of weeks, it gets way easier and you can begin to recognize the portion sizes. So the first day or week that you do this will never feel as hard as that again, because it's going to become easier and easier, especially if you're a creature of habit and you tend to generally eat the same things. Um, there is much less peanut butter, as you'll see, in the left or in the right side as the left side. So that left tablespoon obviously wasn't weighed. Um, and the serving size on the peanut butter jar was 15 grams, which was less than the tablespoon. So again, what you weigh is going to be the most accurate. That's what we want to be tracking, not just the serving size. If you don't have a counter right now, just do the best with what you have. So use, obviously, the sizing there. Um, or like if you're out um, at a restaurant, you can track anything anywhere. That's what's great about having an app on your phone. You always have your phone with you. Um, so just be cautious of that. The weight of food is always going to be more accurate than the cup or the spoon measurement for everything, vegetables included. So why is accuracy so crucial? Who cares if you're a little over or under? A few extra grams here and there really add up by the end of your day. Um, and again, it's that same picture and it just really goes to show like how crazy of a difference it can mean. Um, so broken down, you eat two tablespoons of peanut butter each day. If you don't weigh it and you're over 10 grams each tablespoon, this adds 20 extra grams of peanut butter, a whole extra tablespoon. And if 15 grams is 95 calories and you eat 25 grams, that's 158 calories per tablespoon or 63 extra calories. Um, and if you do that twice a day, you're eating 126 extra calories that day. If you do that for seven days, you've eaten an extra 882 calories that week. So without accuracy, you can quickly turn a deficit into a surplus or possibly the other way around and eat less than you think. So the small things really do matter. And some pro tips here are just 
that listed serving sizes on packaged foods are helpful when you're without a scale, but when possible, still weigh and check the accuracy of the label. Often they can be between one to 20 grams off, and you may be eating a lot more or maybe less than you thought. And then the tear or the zero button will save your life. This is on an actual scale, and what you can do is you can, it's basically a way of subtracting the weight of your bowl after adding the ingredients so that you don't have to use two separate bowls to do all this crazy math. Um, and I can explain that more later if you're having trouble figuring it out, but it saves my life every time. So should you track your macros raw, cooked, or frozen? Weighing your food raw is the most accurate because when you cook any food, it either absorbs water or evaporates water. So for example, 100 grams of uncooked rice will actually weigh less than 100 grams once it's cooked, and the weight change will depend on the cooking method and the time. So for example, chicken that is cooked to perfection will weigh more than overcooked chicken because it is still holding some moisture. Other examples of food that will change weights and volumes when cooked are rice, oats, frozen fruit, and just so much more. So as you can see here in this, um, in this image, 40 grams of uncooked rice can expand to 114 grams when cooked. Big difference. And if you track the macros of uncooked rice, but weigh it as cooked, you're not accounting for all the rice. So on the flip side, if you tracked 100 grams of raw chicken and then measured that chicken out after it was cooked, you'd be eating more than you accounted for. Sometimes when you're out and about at a restaurant or a friend's house or you forget to measure your food raw, it happens. So now what? If you must track cooked food, just make sure that you, the entry you put into MyFitnessPal shows the tracked version. So there are so many entries in there, like when you search a specific food, it may show raw chicken breast or cooked chicken breast. If you cook it and then weigh it, go for the cooked chicken breast. Just make sure that those are the same thing when you end up putting that into your app, basically. Again, just the small things matter, be accurate. Some pro tips, nutrition information websites like USDA will usually assume that it's raw. So if you're trying to track cooked food, double check that that entry matches if you wanna get real specific with it. Um, to weigh small amounts from a jar or like a container of nuts, seeds, peanut butter, etc., just place the whole jar on the scale, press tear and then remove the serving that you want. And then the scale will show your serving as a negative number. Boom, math done. And practice guessing the weights of your food before putting them on the scale. This is gonna just help you get better at estimating and really build your confidence that uh, whenever you're without your scale. And of course, weigh vegetables before chopping them because it's way easier and less mess. Um, again, all of this won't really have to happen once we are actively using the portion fix containers because they account for all of this. It's so beautiful, but it's so awesome to know that this is the math and this is what's going on behind the scenes in order to make that possible for you. Meal prep 101. When people hear meal prep, they think a thousand Tupperware containers on their counter and 1,200 pounds of chicken in their oven. Okay, exaggerating, but you get it. It doesn't have to look that way, and if you want to cook all of your meals for the week at once, that totally works. Meal prep just means taking a bit of time now to make food choices and decisions later more convenient. So here's some easy ways to do that. Uh, cut back on the energy you spend deciding and preparing meals during the busier parts of your week, so that way it's easier to stay on track. Some people, a lot of people do um, meal prep on Sundays. Um, I like to go grocery shopping often on Monday because whenever I cook for the whole week, we're usually out and about and doing things on the weekend. And so since I don't have like a traditional job, I can kind of, I, I tend to, especially if my husband is gone, I tend to work all weekend and I'm training and doing classes and stuff. So Monday is kind of like, sometimes it's crazy busy and sometimes it's my rest day, but you know, whatever day works for you, whatever time, like do what works for you. Cause that's what you're going to stick with. Pre-cutting vegetables, measuring out snacks in Ziploc bags, marinating meat ahead of time, um, freezing vegetables to throw into a pan in the oven, making one side dish for the week, finding a healthy restaurant near your workplace to go um, somewhere that you know is like a macro-friendly place where you can easily get a good portioned meal with you know, some healthy fats, your serving of protein that you need, and vegetables or other carbohydrate sources from those lists. And then just doubling recipes so that you have enough food for the week. It's as simple as that. And if you get my weekly meal plan, then those are all gonna be pretty macro-friendly. Um, 
recipes and they're pretty easy and I'm all about like doing as little work for the most benefit. So everything that you get from me is, is going to also be like that. Um, my biggest thing that I've started doing is my friend told me that whenever you get home from the grocery store, go ahead and wash all your food and cut it up. So I'll kind of like review what recipes I'm going to be making for the week. And if I need to like chop up my sweet potatoes into cubes, then that's what I do with the sweet potatoes and then have them setting aside. And she was like, it's basically a marketing campaign for yourself. Because if you look in there and there's like bags of raw, uncooked, unsliced, unwashed vegetables, there's almost zero chance that you're going to reach in there and grab that when you need to. Um, but if it's all beautiful and clean and ready to grab and eat, how much more likely are you going to be to actually eat it? And I was like, that's genius. So that's what I've been doing. So I just make sure that on days I grocery shop, it's also the day that when I come home, I have at least an hour to prep all that food. And it makes all the recipes I make throughout the week so simple because instead of having to do all the prep work before throwing something in the oven or a pan or wherever I'm cooking it, it's already done. It's amazing. It's changed my life. Please do it. Eating out at restaurants. Um, enjoying a time at a restaurant with friends and family is important and incorporating it into a successful day of hitting your macros is totally possible with practice and planning. Again, eating healthy is just another muscle. So we talk all the time about working our muscles and our body, and this is just another muscle that we have to work and it will get stronger. Uh, and the hard things we were trying to lift will get easier. So remember the goal of counting your macros is to create a healthy, sustainable relationship with food. And if I told you that you can never eat out again, you'd be at the door in a second, and I wouldn't blame you. So measuring, tracking, and estimating while you're out can be nerve-wracking, but it gets so much easier as you go. Um, and throwing your macro plan out the window really leads many people to a, well, if I'm not perfect, I may as well eat anything. It's just like restrictive to binge instead of just do the best you can with what you have. That's it. Have grace. Um, you know, going out to eat, even if you didn't track your macros and you just tried to eyeball what you've been learning with portion sizes or make the best choices available to you and eating something that was high in protein, um, getting some sort of variety in the meal, uh, or just eating something in the right small, like healthy portion size, but that you really want and you were looking forward to eating. That's all a part of living a healthy life, honestly. Um, so here's a few things for you to think about when you're eating out is one, to weigh or not to weigh. If you are comfortable with whipping out your food scale at the dinner table, go for it. Again, it comes down to your specific goals and how they line up with your personal needs. Honestly, I think that most of us are not at that place. If I was a high level athlete and training for something or had to make weight um, or whatever, and I had needs that were that specific, I'm sure I would do that. I'm not, so I've never done that. Um, and it's just about being flexible, really. Um, so what's your personal need? Do you need to be strict or do you need to have a little wiggle room? You've got to determine that for yourself. Also planning ahead is going to help so much. Just look at the menu ahead of time if possible. Pick a meal that you know you'll enjoy and track as track that like on your own ahead of time. Um, you can use the meal description to log the meal and you know ask waiter questions if you're unsure. No one's going to judge you. And if they are, then they can suck. <laughs> Start with an educated guess. So estimate what portion sizes will be and log them into your MyFitnessPal diary straight away. And then just make sure to leave some wiggle room in your macro so you can edit it when you need, if you're, whenever your meal arrives. Um, pick smart. Just choose leaner protein sources and lower carbohydrate sources like chicken, whitefish, tuna, lean red meat cuts, vegetables, and fruits. This way you are off the estimations and it won't put your macros too far over or under compared to something very macro dense like bread, pasta, rice, cheese, and red meat. Um, this can make a difference. And if you do want to eat something more macro dense, like fattier cuts of meat or desserts, then this could be a great time to commit to bringing and using a food scale so you can be more exact in your measurements. Um, again, this is just really specific here, but honestly, what what I would suggest for where we're going to be at with the Food Freedom Group in April, starting April 1st, is that we're going to be using the portion fix containers when we're going out to eat at like work and stuff. Um, when we are cooking meals at home, if you're going out on a date night, I would highly suggest just looking at where you're going beforehand, kind of picking through what you think would be the best choice available. And then if you want to indulge or enjoy some things, remember that that is not an all or nothing scenario. It's not, I do all good, or I might as well just do all bad. It's that you make 
the best choices where you can and then you enjoy the other things that you want to and know that that is all a part of being balanced and living a free life. And so when we're aware of the food that we're eating, that is going to bring even awareness to that meal, not guilt, but awareness so that we can just make good choices and then be okay with times that we decide that we're going to make a less healthy choice. And sometimes those are necessary. Like when you go home and your mom bakes fresh cookies, that is a healthy choice to say, you know, indulge in that moment and not to have 15 cookies, but to have a couple and be like, mm, mom, this takes me back. And there's so many good memories associated with that. And your mom made them for you. And mama made cookies are so full of love. <laughs> You know, it's all about balance and you just can't really have balance if you don't have boundaries because you don't know where you're even at. Um, and I love that. That's why we're counting and tracking so that we create healthy boundaries. And that's where we're going to live with a lot of freedom within those. So when we're using our hand, um, here's quick estimating portion sizes is one ounce is like small in the middle. Your full palm is about three ounces of food. Um, this is like half a cup. A whole cup is a fist, one tablespoon is maybe the end of your finger, and like your thumb is a tablespoon. Um, and so those are just good ways of kind of eyeballing that out. Again, we'll be eyeballing it in different ways also when we're using this portion fix containers. I'm so pumped to get started with that. Some more tips to continue with is just reference your tracker. If you're eating at a chain restaurant, my fitness pal has such an extensive database that almost anything and everything in there, um, if you is it's going to be there if you just search for it. Uh, you can search the name of the restaurant or a specific meal at that restaurant sometimes. And if you can't find it that way, um, like for example, the Chipotle nutrition calculator can be used when you're in a Mexican restaurant. Um, anyways, so. Just start doing that. There's so much stuff in my fitness pal. Um, and be honest with yourself. If you could make a double bacon cheeseburger with fries fit in your macros before, let's be honest, you can't make it fit in now. In other words, stay away from foods that you know don't fit your macros. And you can plan for that. That's what's awesome is that if you know that you're going out and you're going to want to have a burger at dinner and fries and a milkshake, then just go ahead and put that in your MyFitnessPal tracker in the morning and adjust what you eat the rest of the day leading up to that so that you still hit your macros. That's the beauty is like macro counting is very precise, but it is very flexible. And while we have certain foods that we want to fit in that on days where we do want to go indulge in something else, we can still hit those numbers. Um, and that will continue to keep us on our weight loss and our health goals. Um, obviously we want to be making good choices like lean proteins and vegetables and these, the good carbohydrates from that list that I showed earlier, but I love that that's what we can track with macros. So on days where we're not eating just vegetables out of our green portion fix containers, we can know what our macro numbers are so that we can just use the app to track when we are out and just not in our normal routine. There are so many ways to create your own meals at a restaurant. So most importantly, guys, just have fun. Planning and tracking ahead of time is the key to being present in your environment. So head into dinner with the intention of enjoying the atmosphere and focusing on where you are in the company that you're with. And remember, the biggest victory here is to just become aware of what we are eating. We want to be healthier and freer. So this is a great tool to help us recalibrate our eating, but we shouldn't. We should learn portion sizes as we use this process so that we don't always have to rely on calculating and tracking. Um, this is a learning curve for all of us. So have grace and be excited about the process that you're moving forward and we're doing something now. Also, food is more than just carbs, fats, and proteins. Yes, that's what we talked about it being made up of, but food is also family time. It's enjoyment. It's energy. There is so much more to food than just what is physically present in its chemical structure. Um, and I love that. And so remember that all the time. And what we're doing by tracking, being aware, and being intentional is some, sometimes it will feel like there are stricter boundaries on you, and that's just for certain goals for certain seasons. There will be seasons where we adjust to that and we are more flexible. But again, we always want to just come back to awareness. Um, that way we can just establish those boundaries and just feel safe within those. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm petting my kitty cat sheep. I know, say hi. She loves talking about macros too. She couldn't stay away. 
So basically that's all I have for you. Um, I'm super excited about April 1st when you're going to be starting the Six Weeks to Food Freedom Group. If you don't already have your portion fix containers, they aren't coming yet or we need to get you some, I will order some for you and get those to you. Just let me know. Um, there's also a cookbook that you can buy separately, but I will be creating recipes and we'll be doing stuff all within the group. So you don't have to have that if it's not in the package that you purchased or if you don't want it. So. Yay! I'm pumped! Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching this. Talk to you soon.